Hey everyone, I'm Richard, here with an update on PlayStation 4K, the mid-generational refresh that Sony is currently developing. I recently posted a video explaining what we know and what technologies are available to Sony in creating this revised PlayStation 4. Well now, well now we know everything. We've seen the documents sent to developers and there's some exciting stuff in there. First up, the PS4's existing 8-core CPU setup based on AMD's Jaguar architecture, well that remains completely unaltered. It's the exact same silicon, but it does run faster, 2.1 GHz versus the standard PS4's 1.6. Next up there's memory. Bandwidth is improved here from 176 GB per second on the existing PS4 up to 218. That's a 24% improvement, not bad at all. My guess here is that Sony is simply using faster memory modules here, something very much like the 7 gigabits per second RAM used in high-end PC graphics cards. Sony's documents also reveal that Neo titles will have access to 5.5 gigs of the available 8 gigabytes of RAM, boost of 512 megabytes. Now, we're not quite sure why older games on the existing PS4 can't access this RAM, but there we go. It's the graphics core. That is the most exciting part of the new spec. We're getting improved AMD Radeon architecture here and a massive boost to the actual size of the GPU. We're going from 18 compute units found in the existing PS4 up to 36 in the Neo. And there's a 14% boost to clock speeds too, 911 megahertz versus 800. In terms of raw teraflops, that's a 2.3x increase overall. But we should also see improvements in efficiency too. Sony talks about new GPU instructions, for example, plus newer Radeon graphics cards have memory compression technology for getting more out of that constricted 256-bit memory bus. Now, both PS4 and Xbox One processors produced by AMD thus far have used semi-custom versions of existing Radeon hardware. So the Xbox One, well that's very, very close to this Radeon R7 260X. PS4, well the Radeon R7 270X here, well that's a very close fit. And here's the problem we have in ascertaining what technology the Neo is using. There's no existing Radeon card that exactly fits the spec. All of which suggests that Sony may actually be using AMD's next-gen Polaris technology. So, is there any way of confirming that Polaris matches the Neo spec? Well, yes, kind of. Check this out. Canny enthusiasts discovered the hardware ID for AMD's upcoming Polaris 10 GPU in a Linux kernel submission. And then they checked that against the SciSoft benchmarking database. And remarkably, they found a match. And it highlights, yes, the exact same 36 compute units found in PlayStation Neo's GPU. So, one thing we've got to point out. Sony's documents that we've seen don't confirm Polaris at all. We've really got to stress that. But basically, we only have two possible options here. The Tonga or Antigua chip found in this, the Radeon R9380X, or the upcoming Polaris 10. Now this GPU only has 32 compute units, so it's really not a good fit. Now Sony really hasn't mentioned Polaris in its specs, but right now I think it's the best possible fit. And for me this is really surprising. I was worried about compatibility between architectures, but it seems like it's close enough to run older PlayStation 4 games just fine. And if you watched my last video, you would have seen that I was concerned about memory bandwidth with a much larger GPU. Well, to be honest, I'm still concerned about that, but Polaris does feature memory compression technology not found in the original PlayStation 4. So, we're getting more memory bandwidth, and the new processor should be able to use it more efficiently. So, what does all of this mean for gamers? According to the documents we've seen, Sony is keen on pushing for 4K support for UHD TVs, but it accepts that many titles will be upscaling from lower resolutions. But Sony talks specifically about four areas where those with 1080p screens could also see benefits with PlayStation Neo. And we're talking about higher frame rates, more stable frame rates, improved graphics fidelity and other features. And yeah, as mentioned previously, when you look at games like Final Fantasy XV with sub-native resolutions and crippling performance drops, well, it would be great just to get that sorted out. But it just feels like we shouldn't really need new hardware to do it. So overall then, a 30% boost to CPU, a 2.3x increase in GPU power and more RAM, Neo will play the same games as your current PS4, but they will probably be smoother and or better looking. 
Is that it? Well, there's little more we can say right now, but we can tell you about elements that aren't discussed in the Sony document. We were hoping for a wider color gamut and HDR display support. Well, we know that the Radeon graphics hardware will support it, and we bet that PlayStation Neo can too, but Sony isn't talking about that at the moment, which suggests it isn't really a priority. They do confirm that the same hard drives will be in the new model and that we will see a new casing design too. As for PlayStation VR support, well, there were murmurings that the external processing unit might get integrated into the new console. Well, I never heard that from my sources and there's nothing from Sony to suggest now that it is actually going to be in there. Perhaps more surprising is that there's no indication of whether the Neo gets a Blu-ray drive capable of running the new wave of 4K UHD movies. Current PS4 drive tops out at 50 gigabyte disk support, whereas the new format supports 66 gig and 100 gig disk too. That's not to say it won't be included, of course, but it seems that developers will have to stick to 50 gigabyte Blu-ray games, for now at least. I guess the next big question is the release date. Dev kits and test hardware are going out to game makers right now, and Sony is accepting Neo submissions in August this year. Based on Sony's own timelines from late September and October this year, there should be PlayStation Neo games available to buy. But crucially, Sony is keeping quiet on when the machine will actually launch. All we know here is that developers have to hand in their prototype kits and work on mass-produced units early in 2017. So what, maybe that points to a late 2016 or something up to a March 2017 launch? Well, at this point, we kind of reached the limits of the info we have available. And that's where we are right now. I'm still not sure this is the best idea, to be honest. Much as I can't wait to test the new PlayStation kit, my worry is that we'll see developers aim more towards the Neo spec, leaving existing PS4 owners with suboptimal code. And with Sony mandating that every Neo game must also run on the older PS4, I'm not sure we'll be getting the best out of the new hardware either. I expect we'll get an announcement at E3, but until then, well, I'll keep you informed of any new developments. But in the meantime, that's all I've got for you. Please remember to like and subscribe to support Digital Foundry, and I'll catch you next time.